If you've ever spent any time online scanning your favorite social media site of choice, you've probably been analyzing data, making statistical comparisons, and thinking about probability without even knowing it. For example, you might analyze how many times your crush leaves cute emojis on your posts, and from there, you might assess the probability that it's merely a friendly gesture or an indication of flirtation. Hi, I'm Kyra, your tutor for the Data Analysis, Statistics, and Probability Unit for the SAT. In this lesson, we'll go over the average, median, and mode of a data set, as well as how to solve algebra average problems using the average formula so you can ace the SAT. Let's do a quick review before we jump in. First, a data set is a collection of data or numerical values. This particular data set is organized from least to greatest, so it starts with the smallest number in the set, 1, and works its way up to the largest number, 100. The arithmetic mean, which is a fancy name for the average, is the sum of the terms in a data set divided by the number of terms. Expressed as a formula, this is average equals sum over number of terms. So, in this data set, which has seven terms, our formula becomes average equals 1 plus 3 plus 11 plus 22 plus 36 plus 100 plus 100 over 7. Doing the arithmetic, we get 273 over 7. And doing the division, we get that the average equals 39. Finding the average is pretty simple, right? What's even better is finding the median. The median is the number in the middle when values are organized from least to greatest. Our set is already organized from least to greatest. And since we have seven terms, the fourth term will be the one in the middle. Starting at one, we count to the fourth term, which is 22. So the median for this data set is 22. As we just saw, when you have an odd number of terms in a set, the median is the middle number. If you're working with an even number of terms in a set, like this set, the rule is a little different. In this case, the median is going to be the average of the two middle numbers. To get this, we take those two middle numbers, 5 and 9, add them together to get 14, divide that by 2, and get 7. So in this case, 5 plus 9 divided by 2 gives us 7 as the median. The mode is the value that occurs the most. In this data set, the mode is 100 because it's the only number that occurs more than once. And in this set, there is no mode because there's no number that occurs more often than any other number in the set. Finally, in this set, the mode is 5 and 6 you can have more than one mode in a set. And in this set, there is no mode because there's no number that occurs more often than any other number in the set. Now that we are up to speed on the average, median, and mode, let's go through a sample test problem together. The test scores for seven students are 50, 50, 50, 75, 70, 95, and 100. What is the value when the mode is subtracted from the median and then added to the average, arithmetic mean, of these test scores? Notice that we don't have any answer choices, so we automatically know this is a gridding question. Let's create our equation first. We're asked for the median minus the mode plus the average. We know that to find the median, the data set needs to be organized from least to greatest. So let's rewrite the numbers. So our set now reads 50, 50, 50, 70, 75, 95, and 100. The median is the number in the middle of our data set. And since we have seven terms, the fourth term, 70, is the median. Let's plug this into our equation, which gives us 70 minus mode plus average. The mode is the number which occurs most frequently. So in this data set, that would be 50, which occurs three times. Let's plug this into our equation, and it gives us 70 minus 50 plus the average, 
or 20 plus the average. The average is the sum of the numbers divided by the number of terms. So we want to add 50 plus 50 plus 50 plus 70 plus 75 plus 95 plus 100, which gives us 490. Now we divide 490 by our number of terms, 7, which gives us an average of 70. So our equation is now 20 plus 70, which equals 90. Very nice. Fill in the grid accurately and move on. To solve this SAT problem, we use the formula average equals the sum divided by the number of terms. But there's a nifty trick I want to show you that works well on many average algebra word problems that you'll find on the test. Here we're using the variable a for the average, s for the sum, and t for number of terms. And the equation is average equals sum over number of terms. By slightly rearranging the equation from a equals s over t to s equals a times t or SAT, we have a handy dandy mnemonic device to remember the formula. Now let's apply this formula to a sample test problem. I'm going to make this a pause and solve problem. So you'll use what you've learned about average, median, and mode to work the problem out on your own before we go through it together. Grab some paper and a pencil, and when I say pause, you'll pause the video and solve the problem. Come back when you're done. Here's the problem. The average of P, Q, and R is 12. When the number M is included in the list, the average increases to 20. What is the value of M? Our answer choices are 5, 8, 32, and 44. Ready, set, pause. And we're back. How was solving that on your own? Let's go through a breakdown of how to solve the problem together. We'll underline the facts, circle the key words, and label the answer choices, which are possible values of M. We're being asked for the value of M, a term that is added to the given data set. Let's use the equation S equals A times T, where the sum of all the terms must equal the average of those terms times the number of terms. We're told that the average is 12, so we plug that into the equation, giving us S equals 12 times T. We also know that our data set consisting of P, Q, and R has a total of three terms. So our equation becomes S equals 12 times three, or S equals 36. Plugging the values we're given into the equation for S, we get P plus Q plus R equals 36. Now we need to find the value of M. The problem says that when M is added to these three values, the new average of these four terms is 20. So using S equals AT, again, we can put 20 in for the new average and four in for the number of terms to find that the sum of these four values is 80. We know that P plus Q plus R equals 36. So let's substitute that into our equation to get 36 plus M equals 80. To solve for M, let's subtract 36 from both sides of the equation. We find that M is equal to 44. Looking at our answer choices, D is 44. That's our answer, so go ahead and circle it. Speaking of circles, you're on your way to relaxing in the winner's circle if you keep this kind of work up. Remember, on the SAT, use the S equals AT formula to help you solve problems involving averages. It should be easy to remember since you're basically spelling out the name of the test you're taking. Make sure you take a moment to practice a few of the hundreds of problems available throughout this course.